Shadows, good morning. Lay down here, relaxing. Still not feel like get up. Soon get up though. And my bed very comfortable. Get up and brush my teeth. And come right back. Wash my face. My face dry. See, I pay a book for my face to fashion. My third chatters. I say one oh, piece of book for my face is my Jamaica. That time they come back. What can I say bump and kill me? I want to do this. A bump business. I can't put a deeper bump in my face, brother. But I want to give you guys an update on the case. Um with the baby being decapitated um we discussed it on the channel you know and um i want to give you guys a quick update this is gonna be a quick video good morning y'all you know a bit i uh, make it up lord god now look for me so man jesus christ now look for me so i sat there i sat there myself and i look for me so i sat there i'm a little younger maybe i'm gonna chop that will get up here now you know chop and i go out with me so that's Christ. I look for me, so man. Maybe I want to learn how to bed, you know. Let me get up with that in bed here. Well, you know, I'll update now. Alright, um. We're gonna. A few minutes of this update here. Alright. So go on, listen now. Investigation into a baby's death. After a lawsuit alleging the baby was decapitated during delivery on July 9th. Remember, this is a case we discussed about the doctor using too much force and decapitating that baby. Literally, if you don't know what decapitating means, you put the chop off. <laughs> no joke thing, but seriously, you got to think about it. What kind of force does a doctor use to cause a child to die? Where when you go to do the C-section, the picnic, body come out and the head in the tun tun. And then the woman had to vaginally um, deliver the head, of the, the head of the baby. Can you imagine as a mom, a first mom, not just a fourth, third, second mom, Diana, good morning. But can you imagine a first mom being traumatized like that? So now this is the update. It was filed against Southern Regional Medical Center and others. According to the complaint, 20-year-old Jessica Ross's water broke at 10 a.m. on July 9th. The young lady went to the emergency department at Prime Healthcare Service, Inc., DBA Southern Regional Medical Center in Riverdale at approximately 8.40 p.m. Mind people business, don't mind me, just listen to the video. Ross was fully dilated and instructed to begin pushing. The complaint says the baby stopped descending due to shoulder dystocia while being delivered vaginally. This occurs when one or both of your baby's shoulders get stuck inside your pelvis during childbirth. Now, uh, there's a claim. Uh, that she was. I pay drama up over them a place and I miss move from over this backside. Cause I come like I said, I move over here. They also never have nobody at night. I went empty, 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 empty mansion. And no, it come like a this year. Right? The roaches, rotten rodents, and mangoes, and everything come out strong. And me, I get an attitude. Cause guess what? Ray and Tay and Day, I don't go down the night. I don't go down the night. I guess, keep on. Razak, good morning, Razak. Was. Um. She was in delivery for too long. They waited too long in order for the doctor to arrive. That is a claim not confirmed. Uh, Dr. Tracy St. Julian, MD, reported, uh, reportedly attempted to deliver the baby vaginally using different methods, including applying traction to the baby's head. The complaint reads, Dr. Julian. How do you add traction to the baby's? I must say, I never had a baby before. I've never been pregnant, you know, pushing a baby out, like all that. I've never had a baby, right? So for those who have babies, you can't tell me what that mean. <laughs> you can't tell me what I mean when they say, 
adding traction to the baby head. You're fine. Okay, good to have you. Good morning. Miss Roberts, this is so sad that doctor put the baby in. Yo, Miss said the thing at me. That must be painful. To yes, baby. This is the update. Are people busy me on my are people busy me on mine and I am mine now. I can't mind any business because they're not no business over here. Me are the business over here. So. They're not no business, but me are all of the business. Applied tremendously excessive tension traction on his head and neck. It resulted in massive blunt force trauma, multiple skull and facial bone fractures, hemorrhaging on his brain, hemorrhaging in his neck and around his spinal cord, multiple fractures of the bones in his neck. All ultimately resulted in the child's decapitation. After not being able to deliver the baby, Dr. Julian reportedly decided to perform a stat section at approximately 11.49 p.m. The baby's body and legs were then delivered at 12.11 a.m. And the baby's head was delivered vaginally. I know this is hard to hear. All right, <clears throat> pulling on the baby. Okay, okay, Laverne. Okay, okay. okay. Traction is like a clump. Um, they put around the baby's head. Ah! That's one of my pro ah. ah. I'm afraid I put this on TV. I don't even know. Marat, TV left me window down. What the hell, yeah? I really fall. Anyways, every time I think about having a baby, I feel stressed out. I don't like chatters. I feel anxiety. I feel overwhelmed. I feel like I'm going to cry. Like, I don't know if this having a baby thing is my thing or like it's something that I go do. I don't mean I don't want to be childless, but sometimes I really think about this whole process mothers have to go through i i wish i could skip the childbirth part and just be pregnant and then the baby comes some hour i'm gonna feel no pain and then me get up to the man and see me pitney you know that's something me now want to go through the trauma the bleeding the tear out the report the cut out eh, just all the stuff women have to go through and then you turn around and your husband a cheat by you. You turn around and your man left you. You turn around and your pity disrespect you. Like the things women go through. Women supposed to get a lot more respect than women I get. Honestly, because they go through some traumatic things. And for this lady right here, it's one of the worst cases I've ever heard in my life. Um, because there's a lot of deaths, number one, that happen with babies. A lot of it especially in the african-american community if you check the stats african-american women are, are not on they're on the lowest totten pole when african-american women do not get the level of care as a lot of other women or caucasian women do your babies die because they don't give you the same care and a lot of that it's based on these doctors that are racist or thinking you're not as valuable as their Caucasian counterpart. Be careful. The doctor you get when you are pregnant, they will take your penny from you. I tell me, I tell you. And be prayerful to the Lord during your entire pregnancy of protection over that child they will give you things to take i'm telling you i'm not making this up i'm not trying to be dramatic i am telling go read it is really proven this is no makeup story i'm telling you i mean i'll give you an opinion may i tell you facts you understand so when you look now black people already after a deal with the doctor they might treat we so differently in their levels of care towards us and then, a doctor is so careless to have decapitated this child. It made me emotional. Because you can imagine if a woman was struggling to get pregnant. 
and she might have gone to the doctors to get some little pill to help her, you know, get her pregnant and she finally might get pregnant. You never know if this girl, this young girl was struggling and this was her chance. And the doctor, take a chance from the woman because don't think that, you know, because the baby come out and so she not affected. Who knows the physical effect in your vagina after a baby head? Hey! My God! You have to understand the levels of what I'm saying now. Use your imagination and think of this. If you sit in our situation and somebody get cut off, brother, think of me neck drop off and cut off and then they saw what they go happen to you. So I pee blood, root, 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 root. Blood, I go shoot, 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 shoot. Can you imagine when that baby was decapitated in her belly? The blood. What we'll come out of the baby in our belly? You don't think that could have killed the mother? You don't think she could have died from that? Oh, Father. Father! You must judge this wicked land. And you are the only judge that can suffice the anger of the people. The indignation towards evil and wickedness mistakes do happen doctors are not perfect just like passing a public not perfect but how do you try to cover your mistake and that may have a problem with the people you try to look for other people but i you try to cover yourself and then think about other people when you are you also is a part of the wickedness so when you look at these doctors instead of saying oh my god i'm so sorry and you're remorseful and you're very sad. You try to cover it up. And there's a wicked. And as some have a problem with them. Because they heart dirty. No matter the evil they do to us. They still. Try to cover it. And act like they never do it. Or this not. What happened? And they were going to tell of you. And that way happened. And I saw it go. People are even in the hospital switching babies. You have nurses working alongside you that will take your child. And that is envious of your pregnancy because she has not even been able to produce anything yet. There's countless stories of women stealing babies. Countless women of nurses switching kids. Not because they name nurse or doctor doesn't make them better than you. Even if the baby had never come off, the baby would still deform because at that time, the baby down there, a butter fi come. Oh God, yes, it's such a risk, darling. These things hurt me like I'm a mother. Me Filipino, me belly button. I could cry many tears just to think of how this mother could have felt. Mm -hmm. and roll over like a wailing woman for a mother that lost her child mm -hmm. in this way. Oh God. All you have to do is to think of your neighbor. The Bible say, if you love your neighbor as yourself and the neighbor is anybody you come in contact with including your blasted doctor so when you look and see the word of God I say you know people that know God and we know it's enough that know God but what we are saying is how you treat people and decide to move with people is contingent upon how you love your neighbor is either you love your love your neighbor or you don't Love your neighbor like yourself, meaning if you're not wanted for you, why would you want it for me? How oh, you want to cover up doctor? This belly doctor want to cover up him crime. How dare you take the life of my child and want to cover your sins? You don't love your neighbor as yourself. You hate your neighbor. You can't stand your neighbor. Because you want to see the demise of people. 
And if it was your child and the doctor tried to cover it, what would you do? Mm -hmm. What would you do? Obviously, it's harder for the family to experience. They deserve justice. The lawsuit claims that the doctor did not even tell Miss Ross. The doctor did not tell the family ah! about the decapitation. Jesus. She spoke to them at about approximately 5 a.m., July 10th. Said nothing about it, according to them. The lawsuit also claims that the hospital discouraged the mother, Miss. Jesus! Let me get a cup of coffee. Look at my heart. If you taught me, my heart, brother. My heart, brother. Me tell people me have a big heart, you know. Now you imagine now. Eh? Eh? You imagine now. You try to cover it up, brother. You imagine. Fetch up, make sure the medical flowers are so. Look how my flowers I may get. It's pretty natural. Look on it. Now what are flowers in the shutters? I don't have to go, I have to go weed out the flowers there now because the flowers there. The flowers are up there, so let me show you. One well, weed out. The weather has changed now too, so then the, my flowers will go dead in a minute. I have some carrot and some tomato I grow over there, so. I mentioned it last time. Over my little piece of garden. I have one sitting around there, so. Some carrot and tomato around there, so. I mean, I weed it. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plant. Oh, that's so. So, one other one, that's so, yeah. So, now you sit down as a doctor. I uh, try. I may have one leaf in there, so two in the chatter. Let me show you. I have a girl with key flowers, you know. Key flowers, you know, brother. I want a girl with key flowers, man. Let me show you. See the flowers, yeah. They have to creep on them. This is one unmade mold, unmade mold. You know when you got a little place, them and you do the little, what they saw this in them. You make them. Anyways. So now, as a doctor, you go to try to cover up. You try to cover up what you done. You didn't tell the, 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 the mother. You didn't tell the parents, say, the picnic head cut off. You mean to tell me you're not wicked for doing that? You mean to tell me as a doctor you're not wicked for doing that? No, I know this is to you catastrophic. To you this is something that happens one in a million. But you still have to take responsibility as a doctor. As an ethical doctor. And clearly you're not. At all, an ethical doctor. You do not operate under any guidelines when it pertains to ethics. I may tell us that the people them who are in the big position, them are wicked. I tell me, I tell you. Mm -hmm. The people that you and I should trust with our body, with punani, with penis, with heart, with everything, and at them. With your trust. You know, sister, without God, we are nothing. You know, sister, without God, the wall are we dead. You know, sister, without God, the wall are we are nothing. If God not revealed to you, say that are wicked, or you don't know. That's why you have to pray about where you go. Stop from just run up in the things. Because God never send them to you. Because imagine this young girl of this doctor. I wonder now. With this happening and how the doctor move with it, me I wonder now say if I were a nice doctor to her, because this doctor can't be a nice, fully nice doctor because anybody would have just run away and try either a big deal like this. That means say during my appointment them in the nine months, something about you have to come up to me. Me I want girl, God, God ever reveal things to me, and if you not listen to me, God ever reveal things to me. Me I tell me I tell you, yeah. Me will meet you right now. Me will meet a person right now. And the Holy Spirit will give me. Almost like direction. Whether if you go forward with that person or not. It will show me people's spirit. 
He will show me things. I mean, if you say nothing, and nothing if you say nothing to talk, because when God has shown you things, if you humble and listen, and, and quiet and pay attention, pay attention, open your eyes to see. And it's be the very doctor. Me, I want doctor already. Want to meet doctor. So, me, I'm a spirit. Say, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Me, don't know what it was. But something in my spirit when you say, mm -mm, with the doctor there. And when you come to find out certain things, you say, God, missing now why you ain't say that. Or why you put something on me against that person there. Or something in my spirit now. Now click with them spirit. Then I do nothing to me. Then I ball off of me. Then I yell off of me. Then I do nothing to me. If me feel no way. So I tell me, I tell us that some things are not revealed unless God reveals it to you. Some things will not be known unless God reveals it to you. Now, good morning, Jennifer. How are you? Yes, my love. How are you doing? Now listen to this. Ross and the baby's father, Mr. Taylor, from seeking an autopsy, saying a free autopsy was not an option for them under the circumstances. Hey! Instead, they reportedly encouraged the couple to have their son cremated oh God. instead of being sent to the funeral home. Oh, Jesus. When Ross and Taylor... You're going to tell me to cremate my child? Oh, we about to fight. We about to fight. Because I tell people all the time, I'm real bougie, but I'm real ghetto. So I'm a bougetto. I am bougetto. I'm the one of them. Yeah, yeah. What you, what you want? Yeah. And you come down to the church, yeah, we're going to bop you down there too, yeah. You come out by my house, we're going to knock you too, yeah, yeah. You want to go to the gas station, we're going to do that too. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. Chatters, we're going to have to fight. Me not Miss Garda, you don't have to forgive me because me say, me I run up in a dot. Me I run up in a dot. You go tell me, say, if you cremate my baby that you killed, a box me a box down that. They that never experienced aggression like that in their life. Me have to lick something. Right there, sir. And that hurt me. Because they don't value us. Then I think about our mother wants to lay her baby in the coffin. And our mother wants to see her child one last time. The family. The baby father. His mother. The woman. Her mother. And her father too. Don't you dare tell me to cremate my baby. That you killed. Wake it aunt. Me a mash down that. What you and I know say, when you're pregnant, and you're weak out and you lose blood because she had a C-section, violence is not an option. But naturally, we want to mash up a thing because that in our flesh we want to do. And me I tell you God no truth. Me not the humble character yet. So, you have to hold me and the chicken in my belly because some me I come out for the doctor. I saw me they come out there with my belly and tell me my boyfriend and my husband and whoever did they say, hold me back because me have a tape in that make the stitches them rip out. How dare you? Amanda to see and hold their child. Hold me a seat. The baby was reportedly wrapped in a blanket with his head popped, propped, excuse me, on top of his body. His head pro oh! To conceal the fact. That he had been decapitated. Oh man, I almost want to vomit people, but now I lie, I feel like I'm from it. It hurt me, I try to not even ball. But you see me, I try to not ball because it hurt me, brother. You take me pitney head, dirty man. And you put me pitney head, pan top of him body, like I said, it, it connected. Lord Jesus! God, why is man so wicked? Why are men so wicked? You take this baby's head 
And you catch it, Jamaica style. You catch it. And a bull up and cheese this. You catch the pitney head like a bull up and cheese. Or cheese pan bull or whatever. And when me look. Me say. What is the thought process of a doctor. Who will tell the nurse. Or whoever they work with me assistant say. Get the pitney. And when you get the pitney. Put the head pan the top of it. Me a bigger do. Me give one, one, one million dollar. Because this is going to become a big problem. You know? We have to go hide it. I go pay you. Tell you know, me go do it. Any little thing. You start bribe up everybody. You, know, you have to say. You have to get rid of nothing. You know, and get you and do something. You understand? Put the picnic head pan there. Put one blanket under it. And hold the picnic there. And so. So when the people them see. Then I know. Say the head cut off. Cheryl Pringle. Good morning. Can you imagine? Because I was at the time. No, the silent conversation about the money I mean, make up the party, but they did take the head and they put it on the body and pretend as though it was connected. Isn't that a plan of manipulation? Hmm. By the doctor. Listen. Listen. The family was ultimately told about the decapitation by the funeral home. Jesus, weapon and Moses. Cr Father! You must judge this world now. The wickedness of man seems to prevail even though it doesn't. I know of my dead baby with, with the head cut off. And I don't find out from my pum pum doctor. I don't find out from my gynecologist. The doctor that's been looking up in my vagina for nine months now. And I go to the, nurse, the, 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 the funeral home, Jesus. And the funeral people have to tell me that my child is... Head is cut off? Father, judge them. Ah. Judge them. Call him wicked to the soul of the pit in them, man. Somebody say, what I'm trying to understand is if the head was surgically removed when they went in for the C-section because it was stuck. I'm just not understanding. Doing with the form is easy. I break down the skin and tissue. I'm not understanding. All right, so listen what happened, baby. Miss Whitaker. What really happened in the short version? May I give you the breakdown? This is actual news. May I play it on the ear so they can't hear it. But what happened is they were trying to have the baby, right? The baby's shoulder, right? There's a special name for it. I'm not picking something. I'm name. Way wide. So the doctor decides, say, he might go, go and try to maneuver the thing. But when he maneuver the thing, he used too much force. Pop off the pit in the head. Broke up the sitting in the nine face. Shoulder probably broke off or whatever. But the head cut off because of that. And the scissors and the knife, whatever. So when them, but what happened now, you know. Only person would feel something go wrong, baby. Think about it. It's not the nurses. You so come and say it's no, baby. Look, we can imagine now that we bring and thing. All right. Nurses are around in the room because I don't have pitney. So, you have the nurse over there, so the nurse over there. So, doctor go in and man over the baby. It, it crack off. Me know the doctor when you have to feel physically in her hand say something all right there. So, so then put the girl now to C-section because you know so right now, by now the baby in a distress. Right now the baby in a distress. So, C-section, what? Rather I'm not there, so. During the C-section, no, them decide, okay, we're going to take the baby out. Mark it. The nurse. And the nurse, and when open your punani, when the head, when he go uh, try to adjust the pitney shoulder, and it ain't work, the man go up there to turn up the pitney and pop up the pitney neck. That is how strong the man was. That is as much force as the man used, and he should not use that force as a doctor. You understand? He's not allowed to. So, when they do the C-section, only thing came out of the belly was a half a body. Not half a body, but all the way up. So a full body without the head. So them take out the baby and the head when still stuck in the mother punani. So that's really the case. And because they go in there and cut the pitney head off. Or nothing like that. Or, the, or whatever. It's a doctor original. I him kill the pitney initially because the pitney already dead now. By this point, you know, Miss Dan, you get the idea? Tanya, you get the idea? By this point, no, Miss Whitaker. The picnic already, already pretty much dead. Nobody now got set up because I'm not saying the case I come out yet, you know. So the doctor alone would have way he knows there's something wrong when he put up his hand. He know how Punani feel. 
And him know what normal. So when you look now, him go up there, put the forcing there, and I know say he have to feel the bone crack. Him have to feel the bone crack, but he not say nothing. Because you know, say a baby, I have to do the C-section, pick me up, come out, he can't pretend. Like I say, in a hip. Like I say, him, I was send home the girl or not like that because right now the baby there she dilated. The baby ready nine months to cook up and everything. The baby big and fat and ready. So now the pitney dead. The doctor not say nothing. Then cut the pitney and cut the belly and pull out the pitney. And the pitney only have a body, not a head. And the woman away have to vaginally, vaginally push out the head out her front. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine in your heart and your mind what this lady went through? That's according to the family's lawyer. There's more. Father, the family alleges that Dr. Julian failed to practice according to medical standards when she grossly neg negligently applied excessive traction yes. on the head of Travian Isaiah Taylor Jr.'s yes. head and neck and grossly negligently failed yes. to do a cesarean section in a timely and proper manner, yes. resulting in Travion. Isaiah Taylor Jr.'s decapitation and death. Uh -huh. That is the claim on the lawsuit. The lawsuit also says Premier Women's OBGYN LLC uh -huh. is, quote, liable for the grossly negligent acts and omissions uh -huh. of its employee and or agent, Tracy Julian, MD, who care for Miss Jessica Ross and Travion Isaiah Taylor Jr. on or about July 9th, 2023. Additionally, Several nurses are also being accused of gross negligence because they reportedly did not follow prop. And I must add, she's a black woman. <laughs> I bet this wouldn't happen if I were a white man. I bet it would have never happened if she were white. Because that is what they do to us. And I tell you, many fight education. But until you get knowledgeable about how they treat us. Because of the color of her skin, you're blinded. The same level of care was not given to this girl. As it would have been her white counterpart. It was not given. I mean, I care what nobody say. Black people does not get the same level of clear. I remember I had to cause my doctor and fire his behind. I remember I had to go up in there because I saw the little intellectual that day. He think that he could play me. Because we go up in the normal and looking like we go Ode, looking bummed out, nothing special, and that day they were ready for her. Because she never went to her education, and it's a head. The head tough, bad. Me get her bad, but girl, good pan talkings. And we will not come again with the education and the policy, them. Miss Lady, she shocked. Shame like dog with her. Couldn't even deal with me. Couldn't even look me in my face. Don't play with a dick. We will run up under you. In a real life. I mean, I care if you're a doctor or what. I mean, I'm violent. I'm not going to put my hand on you. But you will get this lip service. And when you sit in there and I'm telling you my concern. And you're going to look at me. And make it seem like I don't matter. Me will run up in a yo. That's why me fire them. I went through that personally. I'm in a have a baby. And when I called out the mess and I say I know statistically black women ain't treated the same. And when the boss out that, frightened her like a dog. She a wonder say, I went, yeah you? Yes you. Because I don't see you treating any of your white patients like you treating me. So what makes me so different? And I didn't come with disrespect. All I came with was a hoodie on my head and a dark skin complexion. Is it the hoodie that scared you? Because every time we wear hoodie, no one will say we are criminal. Is it my hoodie, my pink hoodie, that scared her? Because I, I remember sitting there and just being quiet. All of a sudden, the woman tongue on part me. I could, I was so shocked at the way she treated me, and because I stood like a woman. With something in my head. She didn't like that. So you get your knowledge. Because when them come for you. You have to know if you respond to the dirty people. Them who are sending a doctor. And they're not there for the care of the people. Because I promise you. If you don't have medical insurance. They're not going to serve you. You are nothing to them. But a money. You understand.
your money to them. Nothing else. They will not serve you without insurance and they're called doctors. So they will let you die. And you better know that. They're not your friends. Go, 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 go right now to your doctor's office and see if they will take you without insurance. Because they barely ever do that. And shout out to the doctors who do give services to people. Because there's a lot of people who really try to help. A lot of companies I've, I've seen that really try to help even like immigrants. People don't have insurance. They will give you a little money towards certain things. But you don't have a lot of that in society on an everyday basis. You don't. But because I stood up in the office for myself. It was a problem to them. Me not make nobody treat me anymore. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a doormat. Me a drunk crow. I that me a drunk crow. If you turn, if you make me turn. Me not have time for certain things. Because me not run around fight people. Me not lick people. Me not, me not go around and cuss people and then something. There. None of that. So you see, anything you see me rise up like drunk crow? A problem. A something somebody do me. For procedures. Once it was determined that a shoulder dystocia had occurred. According to the complaint, the nurses owed an independent duty to Ross and her baby. In other words, they cannot claim they were simply following orders. Let's put up the picture. When this press conference was done, the young lady was staring off in the distance. I know that look. She did not want to be there. The complaint is asking Ross and Taylor to be compensated for suffering and death of the child and the tremendous mental and physical anguish mm -hmm. and trauma experienced by Ross, who was awake while the doctor was attempting to remove the baby. The complaint also seeks to recover damages for the uh, full value of the baby's life, including loss of earnings and loss of enjoyment of life. The couple is represented by attorneys, uh, Dr. Roderick uh, Edmund, he's on the left, and uh, Keith Lindsay of Edmund and Lindsay LLP, along with attorney Corey Lynch. I'm on the right end law office of uh, the law office of Corey J. Lynch, LLC. Fox 5 Atlanta reached out to the hospital, uh, reached out to the doctor. The statements, no statements. The doctor's no comment. I bet you declined to comment. The hospital, they declined to comment. Of course, that is what they do. That is what they do now. Do you see why advocacy is important? Do you see that we rallying together and blowing up their website is important? Do you see why people got to march now? Rosa Park, you see why we got to march? And we have to move up in the back of the bus? Because of these things we face. You don't understand that you're a minority to them? When we create so many things... You, you, some of you who are run up in the white people so bad and you cool and fool like an idiot. You get up every day and bleach your skin because black skin is a problem to you. You're a whole racist against your own self. You're discriminatory towards your own mama. And them and something of them people that do to me and push with the bleach skin. And somehow don't get to that same food in these wicked people. And them kill off with picking them. That the mindset, the mindset of certain things, I will kill off with pitney them. I will kill off with purpose. I will kill off with bloodline, brother. And we sit down and we befriend some of these people. It's denying the allegations in the complaint. Now, let me explain this. And, and by the way, Angelique Proctor, no, 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 friend. Fox 5, um, Atlanta News, did a great job covering this story. So the hospital, God, not send him in a they came out with a statement that basically said, um, we uh, deny Burn allegations around. as it relates to the workers at the facility. So they're basically saying, and I'm paraphrasing, they're basically saying the cover up part, we're saying, no, we deny that and we're going to fight that. As far as the doctor is concerned, they started their statement by illuminating the fact uh, this individual is not an employee of our hospital which is correct Jesus. not technically an employee it's a contract okay this is normative in the world of healthcare, but that contract is permitted by the hospital 
yep. by way of contractual agreement. So while employment may not be the operational term or the uh, legal term of art, uh, this is an individual in the employment of. This is a contract worker. Uh -huh. There's also this dynamic about um, the procedure itself. Is it something that is normative, especially given the circumstance? The mother went to all of her appointments. Jesus. The mother was vested in the process. And the mother was not told that this happened when it did. And here That is the, the that, that's the problem right there. You gotta understand mistakes happen, babies die. But babies should not die at the negligence of others. Baby should die if there is a medical condition beyond the doctor. A disability type of condition that not, has nothing to do with the doctor. God take that poor baby's soul in peace and everything. But a baby should not die at the gross negligence of a doctor. And that's the problem. That hurts me. It's not the dead baby. Because babies die every day. It's a cover up. It's the lies that you tell me as a mother and as a doctor. You see and you know the distress of many mothers. And for you to hide this from me, you have broken everything ethical. You have broken every rule in the book just to cover your own licensure. Does a life not matter above licensure? No, it doesn't. Because in today's society, especially when you're black, you ain't nothing. It's the final straw. They That's didn't even report us. the child died to the authorities. Who reported it? Jesus. The funeral home called the police. Jesus! The funeral home called the police. The you gotta home. think about that. The funeral oh, home deals with dead Jesus. bodies every day. They don't call the police because they receive a dead body. Jesus! They did this time. Because they knew Jesus. this young couple had been taken advantage of. Jesus! I'm going to follow this story. Uh, Ravonna Thoughts. Yeah, I think just listening to this, every step along the way of the cover up of what happened on behalf of the, the hospital staff and the doctor herself, you can just tell that they really are trying to play on this young couple's grief, that they are thinking we can cover this up, we can take advantage of them, you know, hopefully avoid any liability. The funeral home exposed a dirty doctor. Chatters, it take some time other people for help we out. Because the doctor them would have probably get away with that thing. Ne? Get away with it. Get away with it, chatters. You understand? Ah. Father. By just continuing to remind them of the Im like unimaginable suffering they've just gone through. Do you really want to see the body? You just lost your baby. It's going to be really hard on you. Propping the head up. I can only imagine they didn't allow the couple to touch the baby's body. And then having to go through that, that horror, that tragedy. And then days later at the funeral home, have to relive that uh, by being told that not only did your, your baby die, there was a cover up by the hospital who negligently killed this child. It's mortifying. And of course this couple, and as you pointed out, she was staring off into the distance during the press conference. They're going to have to relive the death of their child every day while they're seeking this justice that they absolutely deserve. So I think I, you know, I've seen some people say, Oh, why is this story getting so much coverage? I mean, of course, it's important to highlight that these things happen and people deserve justice and not often too many times they can't afford attorneys. They're not familiar with their legal rights or things get swept under the rug. So when these things happen, it's important to provide this sort of support for the family while they're going through such unimaginable tragedy. That's right. Um, and we will bring up dates as they come. Oh. Go subscribe to Indisputable. That guy brings the real tea. No makeup, no opinion. It's real news that happened. They cover there. I love that guy. Very credible. Yes, Miss Andrea. I'm so sad about this case. So sad. 
and heart wrenching for the family. May I tell you, every time I think about it, I want ball because it just. The way how they cover it up. The way how the only reason the girl get a little thing is called the funeral home. Mm -hmm. Call the police. Shout out to that funeral home. Shout out to that funeral home. Mm -hmm. When no say something never right. Shout out to the funeral home there. Chatters. Don't stop praying. Don't give up. God damn it, something we have to put up with. And we need strength. We need strength to endure these things that make us so angry. And make us so hurt. We need strength. Yeah, shout out to the to the funeral home, Miss Rose. Yeah. Shout out to the funeral home. We need strength. We sisters need strength. We brothers need strength. And if we view each other like a brother and a sister. We will deal with one another different and things we different with me. And we will look out for one another. But many don't want to do that. They want war. They want violence. There's nothing we can do about that. We can't let people wake up in a time that waking up is important, is pertinent and important. We can't let people see what's going on. So. And them if you want to see it. And this is just a drop in the bucket of issues and things we're going to deal with now in society. In that I'm afraid to have children in this society. I'm not going to lie. I'm afraid to have kids. I am. Free that. Me free that. And it's not just because earlier, like I said, the pain made me free the woman go through the belly and it cut up and that is a sin by itself, me not like, right? But that's not the biggest deal. Oh, me pitney have to deal with certain things at school and certain things around them. Me and you never have to put up with them something there. Me and you never have their levels of pressure there, brother. Me and you never have it. We got to go out the door. Go run up and down. And play in the mud and use stick and stone. And climb through short pass and climb tree. Your children are not in the same society like you were. There's have to be an extra level of protection. And some of you are just carelessly letting your pity them just go and do anything. Because you ain't real strict. And I realize the strictness I keep. Me glad me mama never allow me to go to the party them. Me glad me never live a life as a young girl in a road and a battery rider all day and get breathing and all that. Me, me, me glad. Me went hate it when me young. Cause me went, yo, me hate it. But me glad now because me look me say, I have to protect my child. Me now go say me not my, my child, my child cannot do anything in their life or whatever. But there's certain things I won't allow my child to be a part of. And I'm not wrong as a parent to protect my child. You know, some thing. Oh, my coffee. My coffee man there. My coffee man there. You know, I'm going to spend my camera little coffee. From when you're not camera no coffee, you know. Ah! Willie! I'm on live. Thank you, darling. You want to say hi to the people? Mm. Shut up! Hey, what up, Chad? How you doing? Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for my coffee. I appreciate it. Uh huh. Um, it noon or? Noon. Okay. Noon. Because I'm doing a live right now. So we, we do it on here and then noon. All right, me get me coffee. I don't make one cup already. Me already asking for care one come give me. I'm already in the chat too, so me just make one regular cup. 
Terry Cole, come and carry me coffee once in a while. I'm a overnight somebody, you know, so you know what I'm saying? I live right on the corner. So you know what I'm saying? When I'm a pastor, I say, yo, carry me coffee. So, you know, me not put him out of the way. So I'm a feast of me, I take advantage. Me not put him out of the way. All right, so just know what I'm saying? Protecting your children is a thing. Protecting your children is important. Be careful that a friend of them keep. Me never will understand a lot of things. Got coming up. I never really understand it. I look back because I never know. I never understand God. I never, sorry. Sorry. But I never know. I never mature. If you see, I never understand it. But no, at 33, about to be 34 soon, I see life so clearly. All that we chase after. All that we want, all that we desire or lust for, everything, I see it. I see its position. Me see what things do at the end of it, more so than the beginning. You don't know when it's sweet, you. it's so are you too. When it's sweet, you too, it's so are you. I mean, never we understand something. Because some of us are living in a state of sourness right now because it's something what did sweet with that time me. I have a repercussion years later behind it. Most people would not talk that. Most of only when pick up the terrible man or the terrible woman and years it take you. Years and God do it say oh, no you can't recover from them. And a years. Father, help us. May I also realize, say, Donna, where are you? Living for God is not as hard as you make it. And a lot of things that we were taught had nothing to do with God. Simply religion. For those who walk with Christ, it's a hard thing. It starts in here. That is what differentiates your character. Why you won't sneak that money off the table even though nobody's looking. Things that define you when nobody sees. All of this. Oh God. You have to wear this. Huh? You have to put on this uh, clothes. Yeah? You have to wrap up your neck. Whoop yourself. Oh, you. And you have to hold the long hot dog. Yeah, so. Let me tell you something. Who frapped me with that? Because if a man... Cannot bribe his tongue, his religion is vain. And if you're going to walk religiously, you better follow every law there is. I mean, no, you can't keep them. Now, tell me what a blasted pork and all these things, and you still want a corner sin. Me say, if you don't keep one law, you have to keep the whole thing. But God, we know, say we couldn't even keep it. You think he doesn't know so we are And we are wicked? That is why we had another way, the ultimate way. When that veil was ripped, that was it. Ain't no other way. You ain't going to work your way to God. You're not going to dress 
church to God. Shanda danda langa 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 langa. Mika ya ina long skirt. You're not going away. Stop telling people them foolish. That's why the young people don't come to church. Every day, when you get up tell people about dress code. Dress your heart. The code of your heart is off as a leader. And you want to come tell me, young person. I show me no certain things in my heart. Why am I not in their church? Because if I wear some church people, I'm not going to church. But me know how God. Word go. And even I will be judged for it. So, me not make nobody come tell me nothing. To stop me from God business. You will not have an excuse. When time them that tell us foolish, you will have know truth for yourself. That means say, you will have to have the word of God for yourself, for your house. You will supposed to dump on your knee. And you ain't supposed to pray. And you ain't supposed to talk to God. And a pastor not save you. I just want to get it wrong. A pastor can come tell me the wicked lie. I want to follow it and believe it. Pastor, you man being too. Pastor, you lie at too. Some of them are sneak around too. And we now go to church with binoculars on our eyes to look for anybody life. Because we have a banner class for free life. But I am here to tell you, everybody, of things about them. So if you don't know for yourself, you're going to be left out. You cannot leave a teacher to raise your child. You have to go looking at the book for yourself, mama. See the curriculum when I'm a teacher, Pitney. Take up the book at the first day of school and look and see the curriculum. Go through the, the contents, them. Go through the pictures, them. Read when I'm a teacher, Pitney. Because talking about it is not good enough. Yapping away in church and gossiping once in a while with Sally Sue and a kind of is not good enough. You got to take action now. Faith without work is dead. You sit there for years in your silence when your sister the devil a whole up your pitney them and I say nothing. God I got to judge your feet because you may have responsibility over them. You sat in your silence when you had a lip to speak. But any other day you cuss people. But when you talk up the things for your own self, you can't do that. Not sure. We got to stand up better. This reminds me when I was pregnant in 2015 and I started bleeding. I was admitted. And have to do a DNC. The doctor was supposed to deaden, deaden down there. Oh, so I'm supposed to numb up down there. He didn't. I feel that pain. When I, hold on, let me see. I feel that pain when I explained to the other doctor he shouldn't have done that. It was wicked. So the rest of my girls got anesthetic. Wow. I'm not going to lie. I'm a fighter. A warrior spirit. But I have an humble heart. And a clean heart. I mean, I verbalize that to you just because. I won't pick a fight with you. I won't see you and attack you. But when you come for me, I'm ready. What we doing? What's good? Do you understand what I'm saying? When we stand for something, we war for it unto death. But you're not to be a troublemaker and a mystery maker, a person who are, your feet are running to trouble to pick a fight. God will not bend you. But when he stands and you're ready for war, have your weapons draw. Your breastplate of righteousness. Your sword, your helmet, your belt of truth, your feet, shot with the preparation of the gospel. What are you wearing? I'm a warrior. So when I speak out my mouth, I fire out the word of God with authority because I am a warrior. When you see things going on and you don't speak on it, you sit in silence, you're weak. When you have authority 
to help a thing and change a situation. The warriors of God don't roll around and tear people down. The warriors of God do not pick on people that don't pick on them. Because the heart of Christ is not evil. But with love we operate. With forgiveness we operate. With strength we operate. Because we're not weak. And we know we're weak within ourselves. But in Christ we're strong. Why you think me stay the way me stay? You think I made myself like this? You think I get up and I just become this person? God made me this way. He gave me an authoritative personality. He gave me leadership qualities. He gave me projection in my voice. I'm not a quiet spirit. I'm not that girl you're going to sit in a room with. And I come and I make a statement. And that's that on that. And I stand in my authority with that. I stand in who God has created me to be. I don't go in a room to tear you down and act like I'm better than you. I don't go in a room and do nothing. But I go in a room and stand in my purpose. Because when you're standing in your purpose, you're impacting those in that room. And when you come in that room with me, you stand confidently in who you are. You don't cow down. You don't cow down. You stand in who you are. And let your strength lead you. Not because you've been through some hardship and you're cry cry. That doesn't mean your strength ain't Christ. <laughs> Father. Many won't understand my personality type. But me sweet like sugar. When you actually know me. Very giving. Very sacrificial. I will lift you from the pit as a friend. And I will carry you across the ocean. If I had to. But I'm still that friend that's going to look you dead in the face and say you're dead wrong. But I won't leave you, no matter what. Because I stand with my people. To see them out of the struggle. To see them out of the pain. To see them out of the anger. To see them out of everything that was done. Somebody got to stand for the people. And a wiki wiki and drop down every day and when they come talk, no confidence, no projection, no authority. You're just weak, sir. Who wants to listen to the weak ones? Who wants to listen to people that have no authority? Who wants a leader who you can run over them? Who wants a leader when everything comes running down on top of you, them gone too? Listen, if the boat is about to capsize, What's going to happen to the leader of the boat? What's going to happen? Is he going to jump off the Titanic and run into a boat and leave everybody? Or he's going to have to stay there? Moses, yesterday, let me read to no, suffered the same thing. He suffered the same thing. He didn't make it to the promised land <laughs> after everything. Behind people. I may ask Pastor about that, you know. Yesterday, you know, after I talk to him, you know. I go, I go link up Pastor and say, Pastor, I go to Sorari and Tate, and I, I puzzle my mind and I want to answer. Because I always I talk to Pastor about the word and kind of good. And I say, Pastor, I don't understand this. Show me, Ray, Ray, Ray. And thing and thing and might break down some things and. And we say, God, pastor is so good at the word. We love when a pastor stick to the word. And they come and tell opinion, they do the word of God. Me know when you tell me not my opinion. Because your opinion doesn't matter to me. The word. Jesus. And pastor bring up a good idea and say, did he say Moses? 
he said when he when God told him, um, I think he brought up. Let me see which story he brought up. Was it Moses that he brought up? I don't want to be mistaken. But anyways, so I think it was Moses again he brought up because I was bringing up Moses to him and the storyline and stuff like that. But he also brought up an idea about different time when God disciplined, disciplined the people for what they do or rather disciplined the leader for what he did specifically. Right. And at one point, you know, the people were thirsty. They needed water and stuff like that. And they were so disobedient to God. They're not listening to God. Like they're not pleasing to God, whatever. And Moses took the, the, the rod and he strike the rock. Like take it out with an attitude and lick the rock. And God chastised him for it because God give you an instruction to do something and you decide to do it with attitude. He got chastised. He was a leader. He got chastised, bro. He literally got chastised for hitting the rock with an attitude. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, like, we're literally going to be judged for everything we do. Everything you do, you're going to be judged for it. And I'm looking like, God, please help me because God, to be track record, not clean at all, you know. You know what? God, you know me, I get a girl, hey, I street my man there. God, you know what I think? Father! But when you repent to the Lord and He transition you and He's working on you. You have to ask him to change your attitude. You have to ask him to change your word the way in your mouth. Because anybody know me, you know. Hey, oh yeah, the mocha, you know. The mocha. Lady V, baby. I mean, my mother, my mother. Hold on, my mother there. My second mother. Lady V. Me have to stop yourself before you <laughs> Lady V, me miss you. Jesus. Canada, me yet to know. Me yet to know. I'm going to take my Lady V from me. I'm going to take my Lady V from me, Canada. Mm. Lady V, you enjoy yourself, darling. Shout out to Lady V, honey. You enjoying your traps, your, your travels and your trips, honey? Canada people, me here to know today. Come on, to take Lady V from me. But go and take her and go on still. My time soon come. Me not, me not, me, me not go back, you know? Mm. So Lady V, how you doing? You all right? You good? You sort out? All right, be careful over there. Have fun and enjoy yourself, darling. All right? Chatters. I'm telling you something. I go about my business still, you know. But I tell you right now, chatters. Don't make me give up on the photo. Yeah. Now I'm going to give up on the photo. Yeah. I tell you God on the shoot. Tell God to fix your heart and your mind. Tell him to work on your attitude. Make we not make we keep it real. God don't want to fake people. Stop trying to cover up things. Stop trying to cover up things. Him can't deal with it. No matter how ugly you saw, no ugly you do. I don't care what nobody wants. Me. Then move up from around here. You go to him the way you know to go to him. Which is in spirit and in truth. No matter the struggles. No matter the hardship. No matter the sin in your life. Go to him and repent. And tell him to help you. Because there is some type of sin sometime in our life. What would I call it now? Iniquity, repetitious sins. So iniquity. What we repeat in our life because there must things where we have a proclivity to our things where we ten feet go back to it and uh, when we tap one six months we go back one next year after and we tap us and we go back. These are the sins will appear in our life here and there. Yeah, don't pretend like you don't know me at all. But, mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Them the one day, not hide them the one day from God. Don't hide them, you hear me? Do not hide those ones from the king. The king still love you, see me. Nobody beat, beat up yourself. Go to the king about it. Because if we don't start somewhere, we're going to be stuck not doing or going anywhere. Spiritually. You know how? Hard it is to get up out of my bed, but I go pray and read the Bible. 
And it never used to be like that to me, young. Me a woman, I used to live in the presence of God. I'm way younger. The levels are closer to me and God we have, but who care about what young God we have? Who care about what you and God we have? What was gone, baby? What is now is what matter. Me can't use the testimony of people in the past. And my mama, and when God used to drop down and God come out of the sky, and God this and God, 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 No, 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 be. And no matter. No. No. What went gone, gone already. Right now, our matter. So start somewhere. Start somewhere. And don't beat yourself up every day with that dirty guilt and shame every day. Because the same guilt and shame they stop you from come. Because every time you buff you up my mouth, what piece of tongue with a shame and guilt drop them for your head top. I got that. I saw, uh, uh, ch Chatters, we can be ashamed of doing things wrong. But if every day you get up on a shame and get up in that, that is not God's way. When he forgives us, he not wall over and a blasted shame over your head. You remember what you went to last month? You remember what you went to last year? You remember yesterday? Mm-hmm. Me went see you last week, you know? Yeah, man. Me see, me, me see you. So God is going to treat us that way? He's going to torment you with, with, the, with the past in them? No, it's not God's way. He forgives. He forgives. And when he forgives us of something, we ought to be grateful. We ought to actually try to do better. We love to repent, but we are not repentant. We like repent with our mouth. God that I... God, forgive me now. Yeah, God. God, me way we do it. God, forgive me, Jesus. And in your heart, you don't have no intention of God. He know the truth. I don't make a computer, you know. He know the truth, you know. But we just keep it a hundred. If you do it, and you still do it, I just saw. Go to him with it. Don't go around and, oh, me go tap, do it, God. He knows you're not going to stop doing it. You can't play the king like that. So don't come with a makeup agenda with the father, with the king. Don't come with some preconceived notion of how you think that he's going to deal with you, brother. All your job is to do is to be honest, true, and real with the king, and he will help you through the situation. All right, Chatters, I love you. We had a great chat this morning. A really good chat. Woo, cha. It's Saturday. And it's supposed to be Sabbath for some people. Every day if it be Sabbath. Every day. Because every day we're supposed to get up and get God one, one time and two times in the day. But for some today, they celebrate or they honor the principle of the Sabbath. Just remember what the Sabbath is and the true meaning of that. I just shared Bible study on Thursday. And I'm about to go, guys. And Pastor Sanders was talking about the Sabbath and he did a full breakdown of the Sabbath. Um, basically what it's supposed to really mean. Um, so if you never saw that, you can go over there on the videos and check out that. But it shouldn't be one day of your life that you decide to honor God. It really shouldn't be. And if that's the only day you honor God, then baby, you're very religious. Because relationship says, if I got a good man, I'm not going to give him the front one one time alone a week. You know, we go have to run up the thing during the week. Yeah, me. The husband. Yeah, me. And I want one day. I'm here in my relationship. Man, him close up on every night around my bed. 
Me and my husband. And I only want one day. So I said thing with God now. I only one day alone. Any day. You can honor him. Any days of the week. But if you are a Saturday person. Big up yourself. If you are a Sunday person. Big up yourself. You are a Monday person. Big up yourself. Any day of the week. And if you ask me. We should be keeping Sabbath every day. Because <laughs> God knows something about work sometimes. I need a Sabbath. Sabbath is you thinking about you to get in that rest for you to, to be back. You ought to take that time to meditate and reflect. All right, chatters? On your self-life, your relationships, everything you're doing, your spiritual walk with the Lord, all these things. Chatters, we're doing this together. We're not in this alone. We're in this together. We're not perfect, but we're walking towards maturity. We're walking towards growth and change. The way we need to. I'm a big man. I'm big up on a nice green self. All right, to Lady V. If you're in Canada. <laughs> Lady V. Answer my text message. I'm going to see that, you know, cars. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to my true and supporters such as Lady B. I really love that woman. I so admire her so much, her love. Um and the things she do. She's just like a mother figure, you know, such a big sister motherly figure. It's just it's amazing. Um when I meet these women and you don't often find a lot of ones that you can have genuine love, like like almost like you'll know them all your life. And I have a set of women out here on social media. When I think of you guys, you understand? Me think about you know, me aunt melt. Me think about some of my true supporters, even when I come and me chat daily, and I see their names. I know I'm okay because they're here with me. Yes. People like Nadine, Unique, all these people, Unique Favor. All right? And all these other, I'm not found so I can't call out everybody. And I have the feeling, I can't call out everybody. Take like your idea. You guys rub the parts of my heart that sometimes people don't know. Sometimes they run over here, you know. I, I, I get frightened, I run gone, because they say, I'm not big. I too didn't know we. Not true. Them not know we yet. So, when they real and come again, them sit pretty because they realize what I keep. Alright? So, the one them where they rock with the good girls since day one. We don't have no numbers over here. No people, no subscribe, no, nothing. Big up on yourself. I love you. Um, subscribe to me on YouTube if you're not. Subscribe to me there. Please, Jesus Christ. I could go. Listen, I know all this. Listen, Facebook get bigger than YouTube. I may have YouTube along. That is how terrible YouTube is. No, no, I'm wrong too because I don't be over there all the time. So if you're not in the algorithm of YouTube, you got to build back the momentum and the algorithm. I may want to get like this. Let me tell you something. When I'm ready to drop it, me drop it. Uh, if I want one or two, watch it. I just so me see it, chit chat, and the type that search for the numbers. I'm sorry. I, I don't get depressed when only 20 people watch it. I don't. That's not me. You know, I just do me. So. I'm just trying to keep the algorithm going by uploading the videos we do here over there. Just to keep it, you know. Can we get supporters over there when I'm over here? So, and we can't. We can't diss them. You see me? All right. So, YouTube is not the best. They're very hard to grow. Um, And me not put in no extra pressure when it neither. So, it's not like I said me couldn't. I could. But I choose not to. Because the topics that y'all want me to grow on, they're dead in the water. Chit chat is done. And I've been told y'all that. I ain't growing on none of these, these watered down storylines I see out here. These tired, beat down, big old mans I see out here. We ain't doing it. We ain't fighting. We ain't going back and forth with not any one of y'all. Talk to your mother, your poopa, your auntie. Because we not come. The chatters them, gone. Ronda saw one part of one in our river corner. Long time. So if we have to grow up and then mix up, and we have to grow, we're not going to grow. We're very sad, but we're not going to grow. 
All right? So, we're going to stay stuck right over there. Pan God business. God business. Make we see if mix up go put them in a heaven back door. Make, make, make we see. Bringing down people. Living a people life. In a people life. And a dig victory. Let's see. Oh. That will get you into heaven back door. So. We not pre them. We not watch. We not worry. We not stress. We not complain. We not call in. We not do nothing. We just leave people to what? They have back door business. Me not go through heaven back door. I want to step in at the front. And I want a crown. That means say. Me have to lick myself and the more to shut up. And that me I go do. That means say. Me have to call out myself for the foolish. What me when do? And that me have to do. Because we not hide and go and fake with the people them. We are telling people them straight like that. You understand? So just big up in yourself. Subscribe to me on the YouTube there, so go over to Tiki and the Taki. Go over to the chatters map group coming there too. And my God, don't miss up on the Instagram story them. Cause you know already said me share the story now the Insta and the Grammy. So uh, the hot story them were mainstream, mainstream news and also world news. We put them over there so on the Chicha TV underscore on the gram. All right, love y'all chatters. We will talk. Happy Saturday. Hope your day is well. We will talk and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Love y'all. Bye-bye.